Hey, Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond community and sisters, how are you? And Rhonda, you may need to just lower your volume just a tad on your computer so we don't get feedback. But hi, guys, it's Donna Rudowitz. And for those of you who are new to the Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond community, I am a licensed clinical social worker, as well as a rapid transformational relationship coach. And I help women who are post-divorce heal their soul fracture, fall in love with themselves, and attract true love that lasts when and if ready, because sometimes not everybody wants to attract a partner, right? It's, we get to decide this. And so today I have an amazing client that's with me. Yay, Rhonda, student, sister. So part of, if you've been following me for a while, you know that a big part of um, the Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond program is we are a sisterhood, right, Rhonda? Like we are yes, a sisterhood. We are a family. We come together and we, we are coming because we, we share a soul fracture in common. However, we all come with our own journey, right? We come with our own, you know, kind of stuff. So why don't you introduce yourself, Rhonda, and I'll leave it to you to give, you know, who you are and, and what you do. And Okay, well, my name is Rhonda. Uh, I am divorced. I've been married for um, about 24 years. Mm. And... Um, I decided to move forward with the divorce. Um, and uh, after doing so, I started questioning my decision. Did I make the right decision? Even though I knew in my mind I had, yeah. you know, I had all these other voices speaking to me and I had a lot of negative thoughts and living in the past and here and there. And I was just, um, I've always been a really strong person. And then yeah. all of a sudden I felt, myself being really weak and not even knowing, not having anyone I could talk to or relate to or that would really understand my situation and how I came to, you know, to decide where I was and everything other than my close, my, my two yeah. daughters that I'm very close with. And uh, I was on Facebook and all these things were, you know, popping up different, you know, groups with different ideas yeah. and, and, you know, I would look into things and I'm like, no, that's not, that's, this is, you know, that's not going to work. This is not going to work. And then one day, this beautiful woman. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Well, no, I mean, just there was something about your, the way you looked and mm. your smile and you just, um, your authenticism, very mm. authentic. Uh, so I, um, listened in on your free webinar yeah. and I just felt this really huge connection that I hadn't felt with, um, you know, anyone or anyone, um, going through anything similar yeah. uh, that, that I was going through. And so I, I booked the free call with you and. I just knew, you know, if I think we knew we were going to be a pair, like from moment one, <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> no, divine. I felt just, like I totally yeah. knew you and, and that you could relate to me and that you really had um, so much to offer through the group and the other sisters. And I'm very new. Um, I'm only working on um, module four, the start of module yeah. four of the yeah. uh, forgiveness and uh, just the connection with the women in just such a short period of time through Zoom. Well, who thought that Zoom could allow well, you an opportunity? I'll tell you what, I was, not that I was against Zoom, but I was resistant yes. towards it. Yes. And as a trained psychotherapist, because that was my practice was one-to-one -one for many, many years, when I started doing this work and, and doing the studies behind it, not just what I thought would be transformational for a person, but taking the time to really study, how do we move human behavior? How do we change it? How do we create and manifest a future that we want, right? So it's not woo woo stuff, it's science and, and spiritual, like all the pieces are there. One of the pieces of the puzzle was having sort of this, this group community in a tribe, because what we know to be true is that even on our days where we're not feeling our best, just by association, we get caught up in the draft. And you, you, and I think you've seen this right enough now to know that 
miracles happen. One sister gets a miracle, the other sister gets a miracle, another sister gets a miracle. It's almost like we're sharing this wealth of resources. Yes. And I was resistant because as again, as a trained psychotherapist, you could see my office, I had my couch, I had my chair, like it was one to one. And when I was doing this research, I was resisting the research, I almost didn't want to believe the research, I found everything, every reason why it wasn't going to be true for me, right? right. Yeah, it was true for the rest of the world, but not for Donna, like no, not for me, but for the rest of the world is true. And then when, when we, like you said, the sisterhood in the community, the in, so it's a, it's the combination of sisterhood, community and individual, right? So it's you get all of the pieces, but I think that's where the movement happens. Yes. The big piece of the movement. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's going through yeah. something different. We all have different lives, different experiences and everything, but we can all connect in the, you know, through that same, what we want to become, you know? And what, you know what I, yeah, I agree with you. And you know what I found so fascinating about you, Rhonda, is like you said, when you started this conversation that, um, you had decided that this divorce was going to be the best for you. And, and you, you're a strong woman that way. And for those of you who don't know Rhonda, and you could share this if you want to, but you have a farm as well. Like you, you, it's not like you're just sitting around, you know, with bubble gum, you, you, you're, you're, you have a lot, you, you do a lot, right? So how many, tell me about the farm that you live on. Okay. So I have a, a little farm at, yeah. oh, I love it. Can we call it a she farm? Yes, it's my sheep. Yeah, we just made a name. My sheep. We've just made a name. Okay, everybody. So I want rights to that name. I want to. Yes. <laughs> if anyone who goes out and buys a sheep farm, you'll have to pay royalties to me and Rhonda. That's, That's it. Right. Our, it's Rhonda's sheep farm. So on my sheep farm, I have um, one retired Arabian horse mm. and two miniature donkeys that are, are his buddy. Aww. With seventeen chickens. <laughs> 17 chickens and this is we have to talk about being the chicken and the eagle so we'll talk about that yes i have a rottweiler that just turned 18 months mm. um, i did have a barn kitty that just recently passed away he was 17 which is amazing for an outdoor barn kitty yes it is yeah and then i also have another horse that's not on my property that i um ride uh <laughs> attempt to ride when i'm not busy taking care of the farm that the she farm the she farm yeah so and i have two tractors so i have a riding lawnmower and i have a actual both john you're like a badass my friend john like, deere with a front end loader because of course it has to be john boat. deere yeah of course you gotta you gotta have the right tools exactly exactly so i take care of that i also am um, i uh i teach communication and public speaking at a local community college I retired early from my other profession yeah, <laughs> three yeah. years ago that I did for 32 years. And um, I still continue to pursue other opportunities in life. Uh, I'm a Pilates instructor. I work out at least three, four times a week. And so I have a lot going on. And I took care of the house, my farm at, my sheep farm, yeah. um, pretty much my, by myself, even though I was married for 24 years. <laughs> yep. I think that sometimes it's, you know, at least in my relationship, there was a false sense of security that, that he was helping me, but really he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I was I doing, <laughs> was hoping that he was helping me. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice. It was nice in my mind. What I, I was thought hoping, that really... was in my thoughts to yeah. just never, and you know, and un unfortunately because of that, I spent most of my time being very angry that, you know, I had this person that wasn't stepping up to the plate and, you know, helping out around the, you know, the home or doing anything. And, uh, you know, he, he did have a job and he did make money and work there, but we, we always had our accounts separate because I was previously married from when I was very young. And, uh, you know, in order to be able to give my children yeah. what they needed, I wanted to make sure that I had the money <laughs> to provide right. for them so that's we, right and smart and so yeah. i think you're you're so much like so many women who are part of the divorcing gracefully and beyond community where we've we're successful in our own right we've got our job right we've got the farm at some of yeah. us <laughs> she farm but we we have our stuff it's it's that's put together but it's this relationship with ourself as well as setting up the relationship should we want to bring in an attractor soulmate right and that's what a big piece that i like to say is when you do the work on yourself and you come into full alignment you have full availability to bring in the right person 
should you want to? Because there's a difference between needing and having to have someone, right? Wanting to have someone versus the need. So when you came to DG, just remind me of where you were at, because I feel like I just want to hear your story of, of where, you know, kind of what your struggles were when you first came to DG. Okay. So when I, uh, when I first came, um, I had, um, you know, just the, the, the divorce had actually, you know, just gone through like this past yep. March. Um, but so I spent most of 2020, the COVID, <laughs> the COVID, yes. year. <laughs> COVID year. Oh my goodness. I know. Uh, you know, with us, um, yeah, being separated, yep. but we were living in the same household, mm-hmm. um, which was complicated, but it, it wasn't that much different. Than <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then, um, you know, I shortly thereafter, can, are you hearing an echo? I do hear an echo. Yeah. I'm trying to adjust my volume. So it's not doing that. Um, I met a person, uh, another man and, um, uh, thought this other person was a, a good person and got, you know, in a, involved in a relationship. Um, but again, it was one of the things I've learned <laughs> through this group as uh, the difference between being nice and kind. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> love that. Yes. And so I have always been too nice mm. uh, in all of my relationships, male and female, yeah. which is, um, made me much more vulnerable and always putting other people before my own needs and not even Mm -hmm. understanding what my right I think right not not understanding and not even really realizing it I mean realizing it to to a piece because you could kind of like oh I always do this I always but not really knowing the impact exactly and it has so this other other individual uh you know I got you know really close uh with uh, his family, actually his mother, and who was in the um, very ill and actually in the process of um, dying. Mm. And I was there, you know, in her last moments and helping take care of her with him and everything. And he you know, so has uh, put a lot of my own life on hold to take care of um, this person and, and his mother. And then within less than a month after she passed away, he ghosted me Mm. (laughs) completely and part of it was I didn't because this person came in early on uh, you know for my separation and ultimate divorce I never really had the process went through the appropriate process of grieving and understanding the loss in my divorce yeah yeah, because I remember you know, us, I do remember that conversation, our first conversation, yeah. where I looked at that relationship as your gift. I was, you know, we're, we're not minimizing the pain. Yes. I'm not saying his behavior was okay. And I'm not saying that you deserved that to happen. But I do believe that whether you say God, universe, source, whatever your belief system is, that sometimes when our back is against the wall and we only have one choice, and that is we cannot live another day like we did because we know the same patterns are repeating and repeating, that it really is like that. That, yeah. that, that wall that you're hitting and saying, I've got to change this. Like I've got to change it. Yeah. So it was a gift that for, it was a gift, <laughs> not a gift that we could say we wanted, no, but, ne- but, but it, needed, but needed. It, it, I needed yeah. it for two reasons. One, I needed yeah. um, some momentum to get out of my marriage. And two, I needed the momentum to realize that I couldn't continue to live in yeah. the space that I had been. And that I, something had to change. Yeah. And, you know, so after this person, ghosted yeah. me and then all of a sudden now I'm wondering what in the world am I doing all by myself and did I make the right decision with divorcing my husband and going through that emotional tsunami yes um and just not even being able at some days to even get out of bed even though you know you've got to get out of bed when you got a sheep farm you know yeah, <laughs> yeah the animals are not going to care that you're sad you just lay around and not they, do anything they, they they have to eat yeah exactly and they eat a lot and they eat a lot yes and it's also it means you have to go pick up the hay and you got to unload the hay and you got to clean their stalls every day so you can't, there's not a lot of time to like less rest on your laurels mm-hmm. and be mm-hmm. crying yourself, you know, to, through depression. And I just came to the point where I 
needed something. And like I said, I, I believe that it was a divine intervention. I do too. Divine. I believe we're sisters that are out of billions of people in this world. Somehow we connected yeah. and it's almost like what I kind of consider it to be is a welcome home. Mm -hmm. Right. It's yeah. like, you feel like you're home. So tell me, tell me a little bit about the distinctions and what you've learned so far and what's really impactful to you. And, and, and you know, just if, message that you could sort of just share with, you know, people who are listening, because there's someone here who's listening, who is you, who knows exactly what you've experienced, and they're suffering. They're yeah. in, I mean, like you, they don't have the she, the, the she farm, maybe to get them up and out, maybe they are laying in bed, or maybe they're going to work like I used to do. I used to bring the kids to the bus stop. I looked like I had my shit together. You yeah. know, I would go to work, but inside it was, I was miserable. And before, when the kids would go to bed, I would be in bed. And if they were with their dad, I'm in bed all day. I just had no desire to get up and, you know, just, just sloppy. I felt sloppy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Had, there was just no inspiration. And then again, the torturing of the mind, right. Right. The thought, did I do the right thing? Did I not? Should I, because it's, it, again, it's not because you really want your ex-husband back, but it's perception of the alone, the fear of being alone and the cat lady in the condo, right? <laughs> with a million cats. And I used to have this fear that I'd be walking around town with a shopping cart, you know, no friends, no family. I mean, of course it's dramatized because that's what happens though. When you're operating from a soul fracture, you're not operating from hope and abundance and possibility. You're operating from lack and sadness and fear. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that was one of my yeah. biggest fears was, you know, that I was going to be alone and not have anybody. And my, my grandmother, um, on my dad, my dad's mom, yeah. she lived to be, I want to say 93 or 94. She lived in the same house that she grew up in. She had a 12 um, yeah. siblings. Her mother had passed away at a very young age and mm -hmm. she ended up kind of becoming the mother to to her siblings and everything and was married um, for a very short time. Her husband went off to war. When he came back, he had um, PSTD. I think they called it something different back then. They probably didn't have PTSD, right? Yeah, they, yeah, they called it something else. They probably shock. called it like shell shock. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yes. Exactly. So yeah. he came back completely changed yeah. and they ended up in a divorce, which was not mm -hmm. at all common at that time. But anyway, she lived by herself forever. <laughs> And I kept seeing myself being her. And let's also, because re I remember you telling me, lovely woman, but she was sad and lonely. Yes. And yes. holding on to the hurt. Yes, exactly. And never Forever. really moving past it and, 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 and really just surviving yeah. versus yeah. thriving. Yes, she never thrived. She, and I don't even know how she lived to be that long in that space to be so lonely and everything. Yeah. So, um, and I... I kept, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, I don't, I can't, I don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. you know? She, and she was strong, a strong woman too. Um, so that's probably why she survived it. But I was well, I do. And I also think as a strong woman, right. Let's call it, let's call it a, a like a, or strong spirited. Yes. <laughs> is that, is that a nicer term? <laughs> yeah. That like then stubborn, yeah. or, you know, but sometimes as, as, as women who have, who are really operating out of our masculine energy, not because we want to, but because we have to, we've been, we have a house to take care of. We have other things to take care of that we, we do that our hardened heart is not a normal place for it to be. But when you're strong willed, sometimes the strong will could serve us in so many ways, but could also be our detriment because we refuse. We just like, I'm going to figure this out on my own. I'm going to do this. I don't need, you know, I don't need this. And I've, I've made it through all of this. Why can't I make it through this? And that's the kiss of death because the tools in that we use in our life, the tools that we've used to raise, you know, raise our children and bring, they, they're not the same tools to heal your heart. Yes. Yes. And they're not the same tools to set up for your future. They're completely different. So what ends up happening is like your grandmother, I see this so often that I will reconvene with women who I've spoke with years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Five, 10 years ago. And almost all the time, most of the time, there's very, very few, maybe there's like 1%, I will find they're in the same exact place yeah. or even worse because now they've been through another relationship that didn't work or their heart was broken again, or they've just been living in bitterness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I like you, I didn't want to be that. 
it no, was not, I, I refused to be that. I was like, I, re I don't have, I'm not perfect, but I know that I know what, how I'm living is not working. Yes. And I'm a very positive person, very, yeah. you know, happy and smile. And, you know, but most time when I meet people, that's one of the things they compliment me on. Yeah. And I was smiling yeah. on the outside and inside. I was just yeah. so not there and, but I wanted to be there. So, uh, you know, finding this group has been amazing, but I think there's been so many things that I've learned. It's, you know, take hours to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's just go with your top few. Like what? Yeah. Tell, tell me what, or tell us. No, wait, I think one of the things is that I've always um, known about, uh, you know, the idea of self-fulfilling prophecies and manifestation and different things like that. I teach my public speaking students that I tell them, you know, if you think you're going to do bad on your speech and you keep telling yourself that. And you that, are, because what you think, if you think you can, you will. And yeah. if you think you can't, yeah. you won't. Exactly. Yeah. And, true you know, and, and so I've, I've known these principles. I've taught these principles. But I didn't really think about or realize how um, much of uh, that negative energy I was putting towards myself with negative yeah. thoughts. And while I have, there's been certain things in my life that I have manifested. I manifested having horses when I was 12 years old. I fell in love with a horse and I said, I'm going to have a horse. I'm going to have horses till I die. And I'm going to do whatever I have to in this life to make it happen. And I have horses. And you know why you have horses? Well, because number I one, you had no plan B. Yeah, exactly. there wasn't there wasn't an option for no horse. Yeah, that was it. This yeah. is you you commanded the you commanded the universe because this is again not woo woo. This is science yes. that you know when you place in the command of here's here's life here's how you're going to go here's how we're going to do it from here on out and there's no plan B. Yes. Do you remember? I think it was Dina when she shared. I don't know if you were on the call that day about the couch. She was like she was manifesting a couch and she just decided, cause they told now when you order furniture because of COVID yeah. a yeah. lot of times they'll say it's going to be like six months or, you know, a year. And she's like, no, I, I need the couch. Like now that she was like, no, I just, I'm just going to decide that they're going to, they're going to come. The couch is going to come into my, in, into my place. And that's it. That's what I'm deciding. Sure enough. She got the call and her couch was delivered Early. where everybody else's yeah. couches wasn't delivered. Right. So <laughs> yeah, you commanded yeah, so it. I, so I, what I realized is that, yes, we, we have the ability through our words, through our thoughts and everything to create and manifest yeah. things. And why not it be our, you know, our, our life with another partner and our future? And Rhonda, we, you, you know? just, there's something about what you just said that is ringing and resonating in my heart. And that is... If we could dream up a worst case scenario, why can't we dream up a best case scenario? Yeah. And why right? it's like <laughs> and why do we spend all this time yeah. focusing on what we can't have and what we don't want versus what we can and what we want? And if we get rid of that negative energy and every day wake up yeah. with a joy and knowing that this is gonna happen regardless of what your spiritual beliefs are and everything. Yeah. I mean you know, the universe, I believe in God. God wants us to be good, wants good for us. He 100%. wants us to have pleasure. He yes. wants us to have an abundance. And if we wake up every day and out of that, we're denying his existence and what he has, you know, offered to us in this beautiful life. And the same with, you know, you, if you don't believe in that, but the universe itself wants good light <laughs> and well, isn't it, can exist together, right? It's kind of bringing back. So you know how I say, let's stay in the data, not the drama. Yes. Yes. Right. And so isn't it interesting? Now, again, when I say this, I'm not minimizing your pain or anybody's pain, even my own pain. I'm not saying it's not difficult. I'm not saying that it's there's not dark nights of the soul that happened. But it's quite interesting if let's just say we have an like average a, a 50 year lifespan you know, 45 years or 40 years were really great. And and yeah, there was difficulty, but is we, we, we base five years or three years of that were really terrible in our life with our divorce or with the person, you know, our ex-husband, and we're making this sweeping assumption of how difficult life could be, right? Or how much we we're not, we're no longer the master of our environment, we're the victim to cause. Now, again, yeah. it's a normal human behavioral reaction, but right. that's because we've been conditioned as a society 
Like that's, we, we've normalized suffering. Yes, yes. And we also constrain everything into this little time box that does not exist. It doesn't exist. There's <laughs> exactly. And we have all these rules and constructs that if I have this, then I'll be happy. Or when I do this, then I'll have this. And it's completely the opposite because what we learn at DG is you have to first be it and then your manifestation will follow. Manifestation doesn't preview, it follows. Right, right. Yeah. Right? So you've got to make the command. You've got to get in alignment with yourself. Your job isn't to figure out the how it's going to come to you. Your job is to figure out what do I need to do within myself to become full alignment, to fall in love with myself, to bring my energetic vibrational frequency to the highest it could be so I could be entering into what my gifts and talents that were given to me, that I could be operating in that. Because this life, I don't know if you believe this, Rhonda, I believe this, is that this life isn't about me. No, it's not about me. It's not about me. I Listen, I get to be a spirit in this body and experience life through this body yes. and through the people that I'm around and I'm grateful for every moment of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. But what I also know is that I was put on this earth with certain gifts and talents that is my ability and my gift to share with others. And if I am at the lowest point I could be, I'm squashing my gift. Yes, right? and, then I think about that gift. and by squashing your gift, you're also not giving that gift to other people. That's what, so you're squashing other people. You're squashing other people, including your children, because children may not hear what you say, but they watch what you do. And yes. if they're seeing you suffering and they're seeing, and you're, then we don't give them the permission to do the work on themselves. Yes. Right. And so that's a big part of DG is doing the showing up, loving yourself enough, learning how to do that. Because we weren't taught this. No, no. This is so we have to learn it. Well, in, in a lot of ways, we're taught that if you love yourself, you know, you're being selfish. You're being selfish as a negative term. Yes. And here at DG, selfish is a positive term. Yeah. I love selfish because <laughs> yes. selfish doesn't mean we are taking away something from someone else. No. It doesn't mean that someone else is going to suffer or lose because we're gaining something. Being no. selfish means we're actually giving back, that we're loving yeah. ourselves enough. We're stepping into our alignment enough that we are setting the boundaries that other people will rise up to, that it's the gift we're giving back. That's yes. a yes. huge shift. Yeah. And if you put all of that together in, you know, we're all energy. And if you put all that together in positive yep. energy, then you know, all that negative stuff is going to dissipate. Yeah. Okay. And I would say too, tell me what you think about, because I believe that now that I know this, again, I, I didn't know this years ago, but I know this now that it, it's it's positive energy and the, but there's a system and a process you need to follow, right. right? Like if you if you just go out and you're like, oh, I'm going to be positive and I'm going to do these affirmations. There's nothing wrong with them. I love them. I I, I have them all over my office. Right. But if if there's not a system and a process that I'm following, if I'm not focused. Yes. Right. So I think that's what I love about the framework about what we do at DG is that there's a system, there's a process, there's a focus. So yes. we have the path and we're learning what we need to do in what order, in what steps. Did you find that helpful for yourself? Like, what, what do you think about that? Like, where, where does well, that No, I think it's extremely beneficial because I can, you know, and, and for the most part, I am a positive person, have yep. been positive, yep. but if I don't understand, um, you know, how to put all this stuff together, like understanding some basic concepts of, you know, forgiveness being a huge one. Yeah. Um, and not holding on to, you know, bitterness, you know, towards your spouse or anybody else that's yeah. hurt you, you know, releasing yeah. that. Releasing or even ourselves, <laughs> right? Like I, I realize. We're freeing of ourselves, but we also free that other person and, you know, good things can happen to them. And I love also, you know, uh, where you, you know, you don't, you love the person, not the act or what they've done. Yes, we separate the person from the behavior. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think, um, you know, that's really important to be able to do that. And under, and just really understanding yourself um, and learning to love yourself. I'm learning to love myself and nice. because I, you know, for years, um, you know, the, the one thing that's been really challenging, one thing that, you know, Donna has us do is write down, you know, 50 reasons. Why yes. 
I've only got to 26. I'm still struggling. That's okay. You're, and and that, that list is dynamic. It's yeah, not static. Sure. And but so it was it will really be... hard. Mm -hmm. It was really hard at first to even come up with a couple things. I'm like, I'm, I'm not amazing. And then also all this negative self-talk. I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? This is crazy. <laughs> you are you know, amazing. <laughs> you are, because that's too, like if, if I look at, let's just say I'm looking at you from mm -hmm. the outside in, I'm in awe of you, right? Of, of what you've been able to accomplish and where you're at and your heart and your soul and, you know, your spirit of, for your family, for yourself, for the animals that you're taking care of. That's amazing. But it's, we are our own worst critic. Yes. yes. We could cheerlead for everybody else. Everybody else gets a, a, that a girl and you're doing great. And don't worry if you fall in, it's okay. Like, let's look at it this way. We get back up, but it's amazing the criticism. And again, these are rules and constructs that we bring on. And what normally happens is these rules and constructs are based from the trauma that we have with the divorce, but they also have started early on in our life, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? Like you know, from our earliest caregivers of yeah. where, what our belief systems are and hustling for our worth or what we believe we're, we're valued. And it's what I have found is that it tends to be the most outs on the outside, the most successful women that people will look at and be like, wow, she is freaking badass. The most of the time, those are the women that are suffering on the inside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they've held stuff in for so yep. long and everything. And then at some point it will manifest itself in to disease or yep. something. I, you know, for myself, um, years ago, I, you know, started having panic attacks, anxiety and, all this stuff I'm like what yep. is this from well it was because i never dealt with you know some early pain that occurred you know when i was very young yeah so and a lot of you know how um the relationships and what i've sought for in men stems from the relationship that i had with my father and always trying to you know prove yep. myself and get value from him and yep. you know now realizing i don't need value from anybody else i don't need somebody else to tell me I'm valuable. <laughs> I, you can tell yourself you're valuable. I, now, I'm the most, it, most important person. You are. And that's where we, we get to say, wait a minute, I get to, I get to feed that, that, that part of me. And also it's, it's, it is nice. And I will accept and, and I will receive a compliment yes. or a love note or a love bite. I call them love bites, right? Yes. Love bites from your partner, but it's not a need and yes. you're not basing your identity on it. Yes. And you're not, undercompensating or overcompensating trying to meet this expectation that is can no way be met yeah yeah right? I, I remember um you know mm -hmm. my uh, my ex there was a period of time we were going through some struggles and um he had a, a friend that had told him well just start you know um leaving little notes for her like on little sticky notes you know that tell her you love her you know whatever yeah. tell her you're beautiful she's beautiful or whatever um, so he started doing that and like, I looked forward to those notes and if I didn't get a note, I was like devastated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. To... Well, when you look back now, you're like, oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> but then those were your, that's, that was really important. And it was your lifeline was and like you were basing an identity affirmation that, you know, I was a value or something and to, you know, and he was just putting words on the paper. They don't, he wasn't demonstrating those well that's that's another thing right is because you i like to say i can't i can't hear what you're saying because your actions are speaking so loudly and i just had this conversation with someone else and we were talking about i don't necessarily i'm not weighted in as much as what someone says mm -hmm. ver, i'm more weighted into the behavior and what they're doing because they could tell you i love you i'm doing this and i'm doing that and then their behavior is completely opposite exactly. right and so we don't again we go to data we don't go to drama right. but it really is taking our, our own life back and saying wait a minute i am my source well yeah. let's even rephrase it you and i both say god universe source love whatever you want to say right it's it's, right. it's it's it has nothing to do with religion but right. that's our true source Yes. And when we have a soul fracture and we've been hurt, what happens is our heart begins to harden mm -hmm. and it builds an armor around it. Not right. because it doesn't want to be loved, not because it doesn't want to give love or receive love, but because it's been hurt. It's protecting itself. It's yeah. like a cast. Yeah. Right. And what ends up happening, though, is if we don't work through the stuff, the shit that. <laughs> 
that trauma and that cast begins to harden into stone. Yeah. And then it becomes more and more difficult to, to kind of move through it. Yeah. Right. And like you said, then it shows up in disease. It shows up in panic attacks. Like I remember early in my days of divorce showing up at the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack. And yeah. they're like, no, you're, you're, you're just having a panic attack. Yeah. And I was like, just, I'm like, I can't breathe. I think I'm dying. Like, oh my God, I don't have a will. What am I going to do with the kids? Like, holy shit. Like, cause it's really, it really yeah. feels like life or death. You can't, it's, it's that serious. Um, yes. And, and it really actually is serious Rhonda when, you know, the studies do show us that if we don't deal with the emotional trauma and pain that come with divorce, studies show us that about 10 years later, post-divorce, that's when it starts going it's through it starts showing up through disease in our body. Yeah. And it's 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 even greater than panic attacks or anxiety attacks. It goes into gastrointestinal, right? It could go into high blood pressure, it could go into heart disease, all of it, right? right. And so it's not like when we talk about healing a soul fracture, it's it's on a level that's it's I don't want to say a light level, but there really is a deeper reason and meaning behind it. Right. And that's, oh, yeah. yeah, that's to really clear our path. So what, what would you say to someone who's listening to this right now? Like what, what guidance could you give them? What site is wisdom or little bits of, of Rhonda nuggets could you share with them? <laughs> Sign up and become a sister. <laughs> yeah. I love that one. Sign up and become a sister. Join the family, especially because we're going to Cabo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's an amazing thing. <laughs> we're going to have um, fun in Cabo in June. <laughs> Just because, um, you know, you might be potentially be a little intimidated or yeah. fearful or, you know, you don't want to, um, you know, relive or tell your story or you know, you're afraid you're going to be judged by your decisions or things that happen. No, you need to be with, um, you know, like minded women that are really, you know, uh, serious about changing who they are, their yes. identity and getting that strength from within um to become you know who they were meant to be, meant to be and to yeah. experience it on that level and i like what you said it's for serious women who are you know it's just the the lines in the sand right to do the work because yeah. this is not divorce and gracefully and beyond is the farthest thing from a support group right yeah. and the crying and if you've been through divorce care or you've been through those i mean it is the farthest thing no it's not you know i've been to counseling before and i've sat on that couch <laughs> you sat on my couch behind me not yeah. your couch but somebody and i felt like you know the whole time i was just having to you know dish out the pain and everything yeah. and they'd ask me you know well how's that make you feel and but i never they never gave me any tools. I had all the same tools that were the wrong tools. Like you said, I had yes. summer tools that I needed. <laughs> we need, you were going to be a baker and you're showing up at the bake shop with plumbing tools. We don't need plumbing tools. We no, need I needed some tools to be able to yeah. understand and move through this. And the tools, the, all of the, um, the modules that you have, the, the reading, the different there's so much material. I know and that, and that's it, it. Yeah, it's there is a lot of material. I could tell but you that, but it's yeah. awesome. And the other thing that I think um, is important, you know, other mm -hmm. than signing up, is also coming with an open mind, um, not Agreed. closed minded. Um, you know, no matter what your beliefs, I think there's something. You know, everybody can learn from the material. I um, think. That my gosh, have. that is so. That it really is wise because so often again, we, we've been used to doing things and managing things that we've been leading. And that's a, that's a good place to be. It got us to where we are, but now it's time to be led and to yes. luxuriate in the growth and to be there and not to have to figure it out and reinvent the wheel. But I could tell you, even as a I don't know, strong willed, <laughs> it's, it, it was a challenge of mine not to try to tweak something or fix it, or I've seen it. So let me do it this way. Or I've done this before. And I don't, you know, none of that. When you show up, like you said, with yeah. an open, clean slate and open mind with the intention, because this is, again, we're re we're cre recreating new subconscious patterns and beliefs yes. that, what the information is in front of me, whether I've seen it before, I haven't seen it before, whether I agree with it, I don't agree with it. It's that's irrelevant. It's just showing up and saying, what information am I meant to hear today? Yeah. And, um, yep. you know, having that open mindset and going through this material, I've discovered so many 
uh, things that I, you know, there's books that you suggested I would have never, you know, picked up. I'd be like, ah, that's, you know, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. But, you know, reading it, I'm like, wow, you know, this really um, makes sense. And you can put it through whatever, you know, lens that, uh, whatever your belief system is. Yeah. And, and there's something there, um, you know, for you. And so I've discovered a lot of information, learning more and more about myself every day. Uh, these resources have been fantastic. Uh, just being able to also listen to the other ladies as they go through some of the materials and they can yeah. share you yeah. know, their responses and how things have affected them and things that they've done. It just gives you a whole new mindset of things to consider while you're adjusting your own mindset yeah. uh, towards more positive thinking and manifestation of what you want yes. new life to be. And this is a real opportunity to start a new life. I don't care what your past is, how terrible it's been, or, you know, and how long you've been living in that yep. bad mm -hmm. <laughs> the bad mojo bad mojo it's time you know it's really yeah. this is a, an opportunity that you really don't want to um wait on and you know i like i said i would come serious i would get involved i would engage in you know all of the material make sure you have the intention that you know this is going to be something that you're going to spend time no in. plan b yeah no this is what i'm b. doing now that's right and if you come and, and do that uh, you know, the amount of um, growth I feel in myself and have been able and the adjustments that I've been able to make uh, just in. I think night and day already. And, and you're only a quarter of the way in. People will say to me, you know, Donna, you know, what can I expect in divorcing gracefully and beyond? And I think I'm going to say exactly what you said. If you when you show up with the intention and you show up committed and you show up ready to do the work, really, the sky is your limit. And now not all of us and, and you know that this is our philosophy here. It's not a race. No. Everybody is on their own pace. Yeah. We, 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 this is not about comparing. Oh, she's here and I'm there and she's doing this right and I'm doing this wrong. It has none of that. It, it, we're really running our own race. But as you peel away these layers and as you are learning how to really reprogram that subconscious and get rid of the subconscious patterns, beliefs, behaviors that literally were weighing you down, like literally yes. weighing you down. And you yeah. know how I use the analogy of the lifeguard because my daughter, you know, was, was going uh, for lifeguard certification and they told her, you don't necessarily have to be fearful of the water, be fearful of the person who's drowning because they have to hold on to you and they'll take you down with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's if, 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 if we're holding on to past patterns, beliefs, and behaviors, those behaviors aren't good for us and they're going to weigh us down yep. and they're going to take, <laughs> we're going to go right down versus we could cut those ties and create and step into this new reality and really the, your ability to pivot and navigate and be resilient and to learn new things and to see new things is, I mean, there's so much possible, there's so much can change in a day. Yeah. Yeah. And, absolutely. And, right. And this goes through what I, what I kind of my um, myth, right. The myth that society tells us that you have to be in therapy for years and that, like you said, it doesn't matter where you're at beginning, middle end years that you've been through it you could get shifts in movement and transformation literally in days versus years and years and years. Yeah. And don't buy into the story that you have to, <laughs> that this is the only way that you're going to heal is whether you come to DG, like Rhonda said, become a sister, come join us. We're a cool family. As you could tell, yeah. we have fun. We do the work, we get to travel together and we get to live a life that we may not have even known is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. when you see another sister achieving something, you're like, holy kamoli. Yeah. I had no idea that's even a possibility for me. And now we have a new reference table because right. it's almost like we've been, we had crumbs before and now we're at the buffet table going, oh, wow, I can have a buffet table too. Yeah, yeah. I want that. Like I'm ready to go. Right. And so it really puts us into this, this mindset of what's possible. And I don't, again, I'm, I'm going to speak hopefully for both of us and you believe the same thing. It's a tragedy to go to your grave, not lived. No, that is, it is a tragedy. Like it's, 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 it's a like tragedy we to do We were that. meant to live. We were yes. meant to have happiness. Yes. We yes. were meant to have 
goodness. We were meant to have an abundance. We yeah. were, in my belief, we're created in God's image. If we're created in God's image, we are the creators of amazing yes. things. Yes. We create God didn't create junk. No, <laughs> he didn't start with you. I, I did, did I say that? I say God didn't create junk and he certainly didn't start with you. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And what, what, and the reason, and a big reason why divorce and gracefully and beyond, and the reason why I have it structured this way is if you do, if you're starting to sort of do some reading on your own or therapy, and then you start talking to your friends, you're not strong enough to withstand that conversation and you'll regress. Yes, exactly. They'll, yeah. So and, it's, and they don't mean anything by it. They mean no. only well. Like I like to say our friends and our family are well-meaning individuals, but the, it's almost like you get pulled back down into the pit You get because we don't have enough resilience. That's why when you're doing this type of work, one of the things I will say is don't share it with anybody who can't help you get to where you're going. Right. And that's why when you come to DG and you come to the group coaching calls, you could share everything because we're going to, there's no, we're not here to pull you down. We're here to project you up. Yes. We're all and, here to lift each other up yep. and, you know, we can share stuff on our, you know, group page and just seeing, you yeah. know, some of the different, uh, you know, quotes and, and like Kimberly today, like her camping, yeah. I don't know what you saw on the page today, oh, I love it. Right? her camping with her chihuahua and just like this, when Kimberly first started, she was, she was, she was struggling. She was in a yeah. deep place of grief, which is normal right? Sure. For the abnormal situation we're facing, but just to see now that she's going camping alone, she's yeah. eating bologna sandwiches and listening to the stars in the red or the, listening to the sounds in the redwoods. And she's got her chihuahua and she's living life. And these, I mean, this is what we get to be part of now. This is yeah. our new normal. Our new normal is fantastic. freaking love, right? Yeah. In, yeah. And enjoy in spite of the circumstances because yeah. shit happens yeah, and it will, happen. it will. Yeah. And it's, a, but the difference is the refractory period shifts We're we're in, we, we have to handle what we need to handle, but it's momentary. And we go right back to the identity of who we really are. And that's God's child. We are a divine creature here on earth meant to live and do not, and this is my sort of two cents here, <laughs> do not go to your grave, not living. No, not good. Not it is not, we think about what we just went through with COVID and how, the isolation, how, how that, how difficult that was. We self-isolate in yeah. that way, even, yeah. you know, in, in keeping ourselves small yeah. and you have greatness in you. I have greatness in you. Whoever is listening to this, you have greatness in you. Do not live your life small. No. Yeah. And get together, you know, with, with um, the right group that can help, you know, yes. <laughs> propel elevate. We know yeah. what we can do here at DG. Rhonda and I could be, we can tell you, but again, this may not be the right group for you and that's okay. Yeah. But find the group that is for you if this is not. But so, having friends that just tell you, oh, just get over it and move on. Well, that's not helpful because how do you move on? What are the tools? What? Do you, what it sounds great in theory, which is yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. I want to move on, but how do I do it? Yeah, and that's why, I, that's why therapy is almost counterproductive at a certain point because therapy keeps going to what you don't want. It keeps going to yeah, the pain. It keeps looking at your back, rear view mirror, <laughs> which again, it's therapy is, is a helpful tool, but not in this case. Right. Exactly. Right. So we need yeah. to change it. So anyway, Oh my God, we could talk for hours. Thank you, my friend. I'm so glad that you were here. I love these conversations. Oh, I do too. And I just hope that, you know, anybody out there listening that, you know, got a chance to hear this or listens to it in the future, really, you know, we'll check out um, Donna's, yes. uh, you know, the class, the, the free class. And then, you know, if it, if there's something that resonates with you, then have the call with her. I, yeah. I didn't, I will have to say, I'll be honest, when I thought about that, like free call, okay, great. She's just going to be there to, you know, sell me on this thing. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a push to buy her stuff. And no, it was not anything like that. I, mm -hmm. it was absolutely, I felt like I was talking to my sister and I was, I am. You are, you are yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, just the, uh, everything that, uh, you know, you shared with me at that time, um, it just, you know, it really hit my heart and, 
um, I knew I was in the right space yeah. in the right place and everything. And well, I'm so uh, glad that no, you felt that. And, and no. that, that, that came because truly when I have those conversations, it truly is with a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. I am there just to be with you and hear you because yeah. I believe my work is a soul contract that I have with God, that I am yeah. destined to do this work, but I'm not meant to be everybody's coach. That's okay. But yeah. I'm here to be that time. If you ended up on my calendar, there's a reason why God put you on my calendar. So I am going to give you my undivided time. And if I feel that you're an appropriate fit for divorcing gracefully and beyond, and that I could help you and that the team and the sisterhood is going to be good for your progressed growth and get you to your outcome, then I'm going to invite you into the program. If I feel that it's not, or there's a different resource for you, or there's a different path, I'm going to give it to you. Even if it means I'm going to call a friend and say, Hey, listen, I think this, per this person would be great for you. I'm going to bridge the connection because my, my best interest and your best interest is our soul's growth because we're 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 one being even though you're a separate body i'm a separate body we are one consciousness yes so yeah. if i didn't show up in integrity and in value with your best interest in mind i'm actually working against myself yeah no and and you absolutely did that and it yeah. was it was wonderful so and the other thing i would also say is you know this is an investment in your soul just think yes. of all the money you wasted on Starbucks or all of the, you know, other ridiculous things that you've spent money on. Yeah. Um, this investment is in you and who you are and where you can be and, and your future. And there's nothing greater. Of there's greater no better way yes. to use the resources that you have to invest in yourself. There's nothing greater and better that you could do. And what I like to say in the way that I look at it on this journey is when we invest in ourselves, we, we literally change the trajectory of our life because we, we're showing the universe of what our value and our worth is. But at the same time, this is not a risk. This is not a gamble. You're not going to the casino hoping to win the big one, right? And, or maybe not, or you're going to lose everything and the house is on the, the foreclosure. Like has, it's nothing to do with gambling or risking. It's, it's a sure thing when you yeah. are, you are a sure bet, right? On yourself. There is no risk. Yeah. When you invest in yourself, it is, it is, it just pays over and over and it's an investment, right? Like yes. you said, it's not about going to Starbucks. It's not, you know, you're not wasting money on clothes and another pocketbook you don't need. Right. And it's not about austerity budget either. This is not about saying, you know, if you invest in yourself, then you can't have and enjoy other things in life. We're not saying that, yeah. but yeah. a lot of times women will. And I, and again, I see this often that when it comes time to invest in themselves, they'll have the fear because they've never invested at that level, but yet, yeah they'll go pay four or $5,000 for their child to go through a soccer program that that child may never even go to, right? Or a volleyball game, or, you know, they'll, like I had this one woman and I was talking to her and she says every year she goes on a vacation and I asked her on average what she spends. And she said anywhere between seven and $10,000. And she's like, I really, you know, this is what my investment is, or this is what I spend my money on. And I said to her, well, how do you feel? Like, what do you do on those vacations? And she says, you know what, honestly, I pretty much cry at every single vacation because I'm, I'm lonely. And I'm like, well, then, but yet you won't invest in yourself to do the work, but you'll, you'll still spend every year, you'll spend seven to $10,000. So again, like it's not, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's a normal reaction because we've been conditioned as a society to believe that we have to be skeptical of other people. And yeah. especially yeah. when we've gotten hurt in our heart. And I will say there are people on the internet who aren't true. And there yeah. are people who will promise you the world, but yet their life doesn't reflect yeah. what they're teaching you to do. Yeah. So make sure that who you're working with is valid and who is honest and who's living the life you want. Yes. Because that's who you want to be led by. I 100% right? agree. <laughs> because there yeah. are people who will try to fool you. Oh, yeah, they're just going to take it. advantage of you in a, yes. in a weak yes. spot and then, um, you know, take your resources and, yep. you know, all they're wanting to do is, you know, increase their source of resources yeah. and so that's that's kind of what i like to say is don't take my word for it right take Rhonda's word for it. take the dg sisters word for it take the community's word for it like this is this is this is something for yourself to that will literally shift the rest of your life and so i'm so glad that you're here that we found each other that we are sisters uh, that we get to party oh, i can't wait
So just uh, in case you're after going to be amazing, ladies, you don't want to miss that. No, you can't. And so just in case you're wondering what Rhonda and I are talking about, every year we have a Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond retreat. And with COVID, it's been a little funky because, you know, we haven't really been able to go anywhere. But in um, June of 2022, we have it planned and booked and ready to go. We're going to Cabo and we're going to a luxurious resort that every floor has its own butler. So you have your own butler. If you would like a, draw, a bath that's drawn with with rose petals, that's that's for you. If you're deciding that you want a cheeseburger in the middle of the night because that's what you want, that's what you get. And so it's a, it's a way that we get to hang out. We get to be together. It's 20% like coaching and DG stuff just to continue our work and 80% fun. And I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, guys. Everyone who's listening, love you. Love you. And love below you. this video, I'm going to put the breakthrough call link. So like Rhonda said, if you're interested in chatting, it's no obligation. Just book a call. Even if you're remotely thinking about this is the yeah. right fit for you, book the call. Just okay. do it. Just do it. Just exactly. Do it. <laughs> yes. Just do it. Okay. So you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>